really think more so about the health of your hair versus what it's going to look like and that's how you avoid those issues down the line <music> What's up YouTube? I am back with another highly requested video. Another question that I get so often, y'all, so often. I think mainly because I'm known for starter locks. So I get this question a lot from people who are a little nervous about the starter lock journey. And then some people who are also mature as well. But as you can tell by the title of the video, I'm gonna be talking all about putting protective styles over your locks. With the hair industry changing so much, I mean, black women. <laughs> black women we innovate and we create so many different things and one of the things that's becoming increasingly popular over i would say the last five years or so is definitely all the different types of protective styles that you can put over your locks just in general locks are becoming a lot more popular because they are more versatile now people don't feel so kind of locked in to just the lock look you know there are so many more options as far as the different things you can do with your hair as far as knot lists and faux lock and butterfly lock and so many different things. It's just becoming more popular for people to put them over their locks. So I want to get into why I don't think it's the best thing to do. I'm all for people experimenting with their locks, but I do want you to make the best decisions based on the information that you have. And my clients, people whose locks I started or even locks that I maintenance regularly, when they ask me about it, I'm pretty honest about the fact that I don't really recommend it. But I do have clients who have put it over their hair and their hair is not unhealthy or anything because they followed these steps. So let me just go ahead and set the stage. If you're considering getting braids on top of your locks, it is probably because you've had them before and you like the look. If you just kind of rewind to when you've had locks, I think we all experience the same thing. I know we all experience the same thing when we get protective styles, especially if you keep them in for more than three weeks. You get at the top a little piece of gunk, you know, pieces of gunk at the root of the braid. It's very common and it's it's natural. It's something to be expected, right? You expect that you're gonna get dandruff or just flakes of dirt and probably product, edge control, whatever products you've been putting on your hair for the last few weeks while you've had them is what you have to deal with when you're taking them down. And there's so much information on how to properly get that gunk out. When you have loose hair and you're taking your braids down, it's fairly simple if you do the right steps, right? You you get your hair wet, you make sure that you go slowly, detangle everything, comb all the gunk out, really pull it all apart, detangle it. That way when you're washing, you'll be able to comb and brush. And you know, once you finish washing, your hair is good as new and it's loose. When you think about locks, your hair is locked, especially if you have mature locks. And even with starter locks, the idea is to allow your hair to lock. You're not looking to completely detangle. You're not looking to comb all the way through from root to tip. So there's no way that you'll be able to get all of that stuff out. And I'm not saying that it's not possible at all. It's just very hard to do that, especially if you're going to be doing your hair yourself. Like I said, combing through and brushing through makes it pretty much foolproof. You'll get everything out. You'll be able to wash it and get in there, really get everything out. I've never really had an issue getting the gunk out of my hair when I had loose hair. But here's the thing. When your hair is locked and you get that same amount of gunk at the top, right? Especially if you have starter locks where they're a little more porous things can kind of get down in the middle. It's not a solid lock. I wish I had a lock right here right now. It's not a solid lock where it's very hard for things to get down in the middle. When you have starter locks, you have a lot more spaces where dirt and debris and lint and all that stuff can kind of get in there. So when you have starter locks and you put your braids on top of that and you get that gunk part at the top, because you're not able to brush and comb all that stuff out, you're just gonna have a lot harder time getting that out. And sometimes it's just not possible for you to even confirm that everything's out even in the middle of your lock. Even if you think of normal buildup with locks, right? So some of my clients, they'll use kind of heavy products, kind of normal for at some point, at least one of your locks. I mean, you can take care of your hair as best 
as possible use all of the best tips all of the best products and all of that but at some point during your journey you might experience a little bit of buildup it's normal even with normal buildup and lock sometimes that's already hard so when you think of keeping a style in for weeks the amount of dirt that gets kind of trapped in there when you have protective styles it's just way harder and again this video is not to say don't ever get it i just really want to be very transparent and honest and straightforward with you all as far as what you most likely will deal with if you choose to go through with this now if you have a stylist obviously there will be another set of eyes they'll be able to look at the back of your head and do a lot more thorough examination of the buildup that you have and be able to kind of go in maybe even individually on each lock to make sure that everything's gone it might take a little bit of time but it'll definitely be much harder if you are doing your own hair you might have to get someone to kind of supervise you a little bit or go in behind you and check it out all right so this part of the video is just really going to be for those of you who have decided that it's something that you're going to do it's okay no judgment do what you got to do just make sure you listen to these steps and take them into consideration and make sure that you're implementing them whenever you decide to do it i would encourage you to wait till your locks are a little bit more mature so like i said when your locks are newer you have a lot more spaces for that dirt and debris to kind of get in there and get trapped inside the lock as opposed to having a mature lock where it's a lot harder for things to kind of get in the middle you'll be able to see a lot of the buildup more so on the outside than having to worry about it be down on the inside so i personally will recommend for you to wait until your hair is either fully budded or I will say at least like 80 to 90% budded. Um, and if you have a stylist, they should be able to kind of guide you on that. But for the most part, I would wait until a lock is fully mature um, before I do this. I'm not a braider, but I've done braids before. So I do understand how much harder it will be to tuck a mature lock than it would be to tuck a starter lock within a braid however waiting will just prevent how much work you have to do on the back end when you're trying to clean your locks after when you keep them in i would definitely recommend to only keep them in for three to four weeks now i know braids are expensive now and we want to get our money's worth completely understood however like i've just been explaining the longer you keep them in the more likely you're going to have more and more build up to have to get rid of it's just something to keep in mind you want to make sure that they are not heavy. If you have box braids, you have to use more hair when you're doing box braids, especially trying to cover a lock. So you'll have to use more hair and they can be a little heavy. The reason you don't want them to be heavy is something that I always stress on my channel, tension. You don't want tension, especially with your locks, because a lot of times when you have tension issues with locks, they create problems within your locks that are a lot harder to fix than opposed to having loose hair but with locks you have to go in and repair parts you have to go in and maybe down the line you have to go in and add hair crochet hair to your lock to repair some of those weak spots that you've created you want to make sure that these braids are as light as possible so those big box braids no nah, okay even faux locks a lot of times you have to use so much hair to even braid it down and then wrap the hair so i personally will recommend you using the soft lock or the um, crochet locks because they are way lighter. I recently had some earlier this year and they were so light. I was so surprised that they were as light as they are. And, you know, especially with starter locks, when you go in with braiding hair and then you go into wrap it, sometimes that wrapping can be very hard to take out even with the crochet ones honestly it was hard for me to take it out so i had to go in with scissors and sometimes you run the risk of damaging your hair by accidentally snipping it so you want to make sure that you're not putting in a whole lot of hair that it will be difficult for you to just remove real quick you don't really want your hair to start to lock around this synthetic hair that you're putting put in your hair then you have to rip it out and try to separate it and it can become a lot i completely recommend knotless braids over any type of braid for all of my clients because it's literally no tension at your scalp it's just as if you were braiding your own hair when it comes to the lock journey you want the health of your hair to reign supreme i mean and that's just in general not even with locks but really think more so about the health of your hair versus what it's going to look like and that's how you avoid those issues down the line where you're regretting certain things you did in the beginning or whatever put the health over the look and I think the healthiest braid option 
in general with loose hair and locks is the knotless method. I would also minimize edge control and heavy products. I know the trend with braids is to also kind of swoop your edges and do a whole lot of edge control. Like I mentioned before, it'll just provide more buildup, more product for your hair to kind of lock at the root and it might create some issues. You might also want to consider washing your hair every one to two weeks. Now with locks, I know most people do not wash their hair that often. I don't even recommend that my clients wash their hair every week, but every two weeks is fine just to kind of cleanse your hair in between and make sure you're getting some of that buildup out every so often so that when you get to the end of your protective style, you're not working with so much because you've done some of the work over time. That's pretty much all of the tips that I have as far as putting protective styles over your locks. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. However, you do really want to be cautious and I would even recommend if you do your hair at home going to a professional after taking the braids out to make sure that they're getting everything out and really being thorough in the wash and cleansing of your hair you want to make sure that they are going to use a clarifying shampoo those are really good if you're due for like apple cider vinegar or something like that I don't recommend it just because but if you're due for something like that and you already have other buildup that might be a good option as well especially if it becomes to be too much for you to just kind of get out on your own with your hand or with the clarifying shampoo but clarifying shampoos are amazing the only thing with those is that you definitely want to make sure that you are doing extra moisturization at the end because clarifying shampoos are meant to strip a lot of the oils and excess kind of dirt and stuff like that out of your hair so from that stripping you want to follow up with much more hydration much more moisture all in all if you're someone who's looking to get braids over your star locks really just because you're a little uncomfortable about the starter lock phase or you want to make it a little easier i completely understand i am very sympathetic to people who start the lock journey because you really want long beautiful locks but going through the initial phase is a little bit hard i understand i completely understand i literally see it every day but i will encourage you to just try to limit the amount of like concealing you do with your locks. Try to find ways to make the locks work better for you. If they're shoulder length, you want them a little longer, maybe just adding a little bit of length with it, not, you know, down your back or, you know, kind of alter things to make it just a little bit easier for you without going overboard to make it look like you don't have locks at all. I try my hardest to explain to my clients and really just show them the beauty of the journey and the beauty in going through all the different phases. I know people got all the different names for it. I will never call it an ugly phase because it's not ugly to me. However, I do understand why people feel that way. So it's a journey that a lot of people go through and it causes you to kind of revisit things about yourself look at your self-esteem. I'm all for people doing what's going to make them feel best about themselves, but I'm also all for people doing what's going to be the healthiest option for you in the long run. If you're looking to get starter locks, if you don't have them right now, I would recommend that you do a lot of research as far as, you know, what you're in for, for the beginning phases, and try to come up with a plan that you can stick to, whether that's finding the styles that you want to do up front, whether it's choosing a method like instant locks or lock extensions that's going to make it a little bit easier for you to go through that beginner phase. But try your hardest to just embrace the journey. I say this in most of my videos, but embrace the journey. I have clients who have 10 year old locks who miss the starter lock phase. Like throughout the journey, there are pros and cons and highs and lows to the entire journey and appreciating both of those, the highs and the lows along will make it that much more fulfilling when you look back on what you went through and how your self-esteem grew, how you learned to love yourself, how you learned to not look for outside validation. All of those things are what I typically see my clients go through during their transformation in this lock journey. So that's all I have. I'm going to end this video here. Make sure you are subscribed down below. I'm going to keep pushing these videos out because you all are loving it and I'm so honored to be trusted in this space to be your online resource for lock care information. Make sure you check out the rest of my videos. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram as well because it's beautiful and nice over there. I share a lot of my work. If you are in the DC Maryland area, you can go ahead and book me, you know. So I'll have my booking link below and you all have a great day 
afternoon or night, wherever you are. Um, and I will see you in my next video. Y'all have a good one. Take care. Thank you.